Oh, wait, 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 wrong. I've got to get the injector return line uh, installed first. Completely neglected that return line. How horrible would that be? You put this whole job back together and you forget the return line and have to take it all back apart to do it again. I mean, I like my job a lot, but not to do this one twice. No, no, not interested. Opening Z hood. Hello everybody, good day to you and welcome back. The day has finally arrived. We are returning to this 2004 Chevrolet Silverado 2500. It's the HD with the LB766 Duramax. We had uh, left off on this vehicle at the end of a, uh, a two-part teardown where I removed uh, the faulty fuel injectors from both banks, cleaned it up, covered the thing up, and I've been waiting for a delivery to arrive uh, which consisted of my new fuel injector components. Now, before we get started, I need to correct the record a little bit. When I pulled these things out, I had noticed that these uh, fuel injectors right here were from a company called diesellogic.com. Uh, I did a little bit of a uh, keyboard warrior research on that company, and I found, um, I, well, frankly, I found a lot of negative reviews. And in that video, I, uh, I kind of uh, repeated some of those negative reviews and I weighed in on, um, on what I thought of this company based on those reviews and uh, based on some verbiage that, uh, that I had read from a few other sources. Uh, because of that, I ended up catching a little bit of negative attention from diesellogic.com. And they gave me a call wondering you know, what kind of ax that I had to grind. Um, after a couple conversations, everybody realized that I, I wasn't out seeking blood against them. It wasn't a personal thing. Um, it was just my commentary and it went a little bit too far, uh, which again caught some negative attention and, uh, and, and I was a little bit out of line when I did that. So a negative can, can go like one of two ways. It can become more negative or it can be retracted and be turned into a positive. And between myself and diesellogic.com, we felt turning the situation into a positive was gonna be better off for all parties involved. Uh, so that being said, uh, rather than us going to war with each other on the internet, they invited me out to Jacksonville, Florida to visit their manufacturing facility. Uh, they did acknowledge that there was some negativity surrounding these LB7 fuel injectors and they've also explained to me in great detail how they've made tremendous efforts to uh, uh, to rectify those situations and move forward uh, as a business. And I was not aware of that uh, when I made the comments that I made. So after we get this truck back together and it's all said and done with, uh, I may be taking a field trip out to Jacksonville to take a look and meet with the folks at diesellogic.com. Uh, they invited me to visit their warehouse facility and they invited all of you guys to come along with me. So that's gonna be something coming up later on. Uh, one of the also, so one of the other things that they also did was offer to uh, replace these injectors that are in this unit, even though we had found out that these things were built back in 2015, uh, they've got serial numbers on them and we ran the numbers, found out these things are nearly a decade old. Uh, fortunately, we do not know the mileage on them. There's no receipts or paperwork in the vehicle uh, on such things, but based on their age, nobody was really surprised that they had failed. And again, that was me sort of jumping the gun and I kind of made some assumptions. And you guys know what I say about assumptions, they just make me an ass. And, and that's what I did. Uh, but uh, I'm here to set the record straight and we're going to move on from that. And like I said, we're gonna turn that negative into a positive and then we all can live happily ever after. And I think that's the best thing for everybody. But anyway, as I was saying, they did offer a replacement set of these just to kind of prove it out. Unfortunately, I had already made the order uh, from another company uh, to replace these with. So uh, I won't be able to reuse these diesel logic injectors or use another set of diesel logics. I ended up having to go with some SNSs, uh, which uh, I ordered from SNS.com. And it was nothing personal against diesel logic. I ordered these, uh, these injectors here for a specific reason. And that is this designation right here, that SAC00 number right there. Let me grab one of these out of the box here and I'll show you what I mean. If we can see it, the resolution is going to be tough, but there is an updated gravity. There is an updated nozzle design to be found on these SAC 00s. It's going to be tough to see, but if you see right here how that nozzle is 
kind of pointy and uh, the angles are a little bit steeper. If we look over here at that nozzle, it's more rounded and shallow and the angles are not as sharp. Now, what that means is there's a different spray pattern between this injector here and this injector over here. And that is uh, what they have considered to be an upgraded and updated design, which is the reason that I went with this particular injector design. Uh, nothing personal against the diesel logic guys. That's just the one that we ended up ordering. Uh, in retrospect, had I had our conversations earlier, I would have loved to have given them the opportunity to replace these and we could see what they were all about. Um, I might be able to do something similar if uh, Diesel Logic's on board with that, but that's going to be a conversation for us to have regarding a different Duramax, probably mine, and, uh, and we'll have to have that in the future later on when we go and visit their facility uh, in the next few weeks. However, at this point, none of that's a priority because now that I have some parts here, I need to get some more progress made on the truck. Uh, like I said, it's been hanging out here for a couple weeks now. It's taken up the lift and I really need my big lift because I've got another pile of trucks out there that all need to come over here. So my priority for the day is to get these units installed, reconnected, everything hooked up and put back together. I'm gonna get as much done as possible. Now, I've already made a few disassembly videos on this particular truck uh, when I tore it apart and when we diagnosed it. Uh, please feel free to go ahead and check the links down inside of this video's description if you'd like to go back in time and refresh yourself or catch up if you missed those videos. But uh, this is no longer the teardown portion. We are now back into reassembly. I'm gonna try to knock out most of this in one video. Uh, chances are it's gonna continue to be a, a series rather than just one final episode. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. I've already taken the liberty of cleaning up all of the ceiling surfaces. I've cleaned out the injector cups on all the cylinders, blown out all the oil, the dirt, dust, debris, sealant and um, water, contaminated fuel, you name it, I've cleaned it out. And these things have been here undercover for about a week or so. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and start on this side since I just pulled the cover off. We're gonna blow these injector cups out one more time just to make sure it's all clean because you can see there's been some little bit of oil runoff down inside of there and we can't have anything in down inside of those cups. The, it has to be super spotless and exceptionally clean in order to create a good seal for our fuel injectors. So we're gonna start off, like I said, here on the passenger side. We're just gonna start dropping these injectors down in the holes, starting with the copper crush washer. They're gonna seat this flat against the bottom of the injector cup and when we tighten that injector down it'll crush that washer and that creates the seal so all we need to do is just kind of drop that guy down make sure it's straight and then the injector follows right afterwards long pry driver coming in just to seat that thing flat there we go and i'm going to come on in with the injector and with its hold down clamp with the bolt uh, from what I've read so far, I do not have to replace these bolts. The Ford 6.7 guys tell me that these are single use only, but I've uh, not read on any literature that they are single use only on the D-Maxes. So I'm going to go ahead and say that that's going to be just fine and we're going to drop it down. Oh, wait, 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 back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. I need to get some lube on that O-ring right there so it does not tear. Remember, we pulled one out of the other side and that O-ring was folded over. It's not, it was, yeah, it's kind of like that. Not the most critical seal right here because these things seal down here with the crush washer, but it's uh, there to prevent oil intrusion uh, and possibly even water intrusion down into uh, the bottom of this injector. Here, a little bit of lube. I just threw some dielectric on there just to prevent that seal from getting hung up. We've got the hold down, got the bolt. Just drop this thing down into position here and get it seated. Give it a bit of a push. And I'll leave this bolt sticking up, that way I know it's not tight. All right, number two coming in. Dropping the uh, copper crush washer down. It's seated flat. I don't know if y'all can see down there, a little bit far. But that guy is flat. Let's bring in our next fuel injector we'll pull the cap I'm gonna leave these caps on just to keep everything nice and clean we can pull them off later when the time is right that's our hold down and I've got some grease on the o-ring new o-ring here and a new o-ring here under that cap right there send this guy down into its home give it a wiggle and some pressure 
Come on, O-ring. There we go. Bolt coming in. Moving on down the line here. Trying to make a uh, make haste here. Like I said, it's been been about 10 days while I've been waiting on these parts. Number three, crush washer coming in. And, and again, I've already re-blown out crush washer going down. That's fine. Get another one. Repeat. That one's still on the ground. I'll have to fetch that later. Drop that washer in the hole. Pull off our cap. I like how they flared the end of these caps. That way you can't install this injector with the cap installed on the end of the tip. That would not make for a good fuel distribution now, would it? Let's get this oriented properly. The farther back we go, the tighter of a squeeze I'm coming up with here. We drop it in. Oh, I'm losing a cap. Here, put that back. And again, a little bit of pressure and wiggle until it seats. Click. Let's get that one threaded in. Okay, that's three units. Good. Let's get our fourth unit prepped and ready to rock and roll. Now, folks familiar with common rail diesels, most of these you have to program the IQA number, which is called the injector quantity number. These ones do have a serial number and I am taking sequential photographs of those numbers, but I do not believe these uh, LB7s have a programmable IQA. It's injector quantity adjustment. Uh, that number's there based on the injector's individual flow rate in order to maintain a smooth, smooth idle. The number will basically tell the injector or tell the ECM how the injector flows and it knows what to do with it regarding its pulse width at idle to, to deliver the appropriate amount of fuel. But like I said, I don't think these ones uh, are IQA programmable, but just in case, I've got photographs uh, of the build numbers. A little bit of grease on here for easy slippages. Failing to grease these is exactly what causes a rolled O-ring. And we don't want to do that. A little bit of grease there. This one's ready to rock and roll. Let's get it installed. You know, I could put the crush washers on like that, but then they just fall off again down in the hole and you don't know if they're gonna seat properly, so I just like to drop them down in the holes. You can't do that with every diesel, but in this particular case, that's how it works. Okay, next unit coming in and I'm I'm to your left with my, my crane branium and I can see with my eyeballs here that that injector cup is also clean. I can also see that this surface is a little bit dirty right there. Oh, it's all gouged up from something. It's all scratched. That's not really dirt. That's just oil in the scratches. Don't know how that got there. Whatever, no matter. It's not a super critical surface. Okay, let's get this next unit in position here. We'll get it lined up in the hole. Clamps coming in. You can't slide the clamps in after the injector is down, so you gotta put both pieces in simultaneously here. Again, we wiggle some. I need more wiggling. A little bit of down. Come here. There we go. Bolt's coming in. Okay, that's good. All right, those four are kind of in position. Let's move over to the driver's side and get the remaining four down inside of their homes. Pull the towel back here, get that out of the way. And I'm gonna go through with an air gun one more time and blow all this stuff out of here just to make sure it stays super duper clean. Yeah, let's get some more light on the subject here and we can blow out uh, We'll go ahead and blow out those injector cups and make sure it's squeaky clean down there Loud noises hmm. Change my angle here Looking good 
Hey, look, this one's a little scratched up too. See that? Interesting. Okay, next unit. It's been O-ringed already and it lubricated. Let's lose the tip. Got the hold down clamp already in position. Slide that down after I forgot to put in the seal. I'm not doing okay today. I'm thinking too far ahead and failing to think in the moment. That's what's going on here. Anyway, crush washer's down in its home. Reinserting the injection module. Drop you right down in there, nice and easy like. That's good. Wiggle it and rotate it and snap it in. Hold down bolt, also coming in. That thread was a little gritty getting started, but we got it. Okay, that's five units installed. Let's get the next one set up here. Oop, that one did not sit straight. It's a little off, a little bit sideways. We'll flatten it out with a, an extension here. There we go. Kind of a tight squeeze in here. Yeah, that boost pipe right there is in the way a little bit. See the little blue towel sticking out of it? That one's good. There's our hold down bolt. Now we're off to the two hardest ones, the ones way, way back over there. Let's get these illuminators out of our way. Let's see what we're trying to see here. There we go. Oh, too much illuminator. And no, there. Okay, another washer. The hole's looking clean. That's how we want it. Injector and hold down. Goodbye, Cap. Again, we've got the O-ring. It's been lubricated. I feel compelled to mention it. Let's get you lined up. My probe end is not pointed in the right spot. Oh, I just lost my cap. Let's recover that real quick. Hmm. Uh-oh. I have my hold down clamp the wrong direction here. It's on upside down. It's a directional clamp. There's an offset to it. Y'all can't see. Yeah, there's an offset to it. And if it's not the right way, then it won't bolt on. Clearly. Thank you, Captain Obvious. There we go. Ooh, this one's being stubborn. Mm, please go in. There it goes. The audible click is my indicator here. There's our bolt coming in. I'll reach around that pipe here. The hard one's the far back cylinder. That's going to be the, the fun part. I need to get a stool. I cannot reach. I'm on, I'm on the tippy toes right now. Okay, that's threaded on. Good. Okay, last of the Mohicans here. We've got one more washer. Uh, this isn't the one I picked up off the ground. I've got a, an installation kit here that came with another one of these units. So I have, uh, I have components in multiples because you buy one install kit and it comes with a set of washers and O-rings. And then I got the, uh, the fuel line return kit and that came with its whole another set of washers and O-rings. Okay, injector coming in. Let's pull the tip cover. I'm trying to figure out the best place to position myself here. 
We have multiple obstructions. Can't even find the hole. Where is it? Back here. There we go. That's it. Looking good. Feeling good. Looking good. It is good. Come on now. Get in there. Clicks. Okay, now time for the last hold down bolt. Let's get this guy threaded in here and we'll come through with the torque wrench and get all these injectors clamped down. Let's see if my, if that one's too long. Kinda, not really. Yeah, that one's too long. I won't be able to get a torque wrench on that tool. I don't think. Ah, that hurts my hand. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, now it is torque wrench time. These uh, hold down bolts are supposed to be torqued to 37 foot pounds of torque. So let me get the proper orientation of components here. Try to get the torque wrench on this thing. I can't just stick it on right there because we've got we've got these injectors in the way, and the solenoids. This is the digital wrench right here. It's set to 37. Let's see if I can do this without breaking off the solenoid. Real tight squeeze here. I think I can pull this one off. The rest of them should be no problem. I can do them with a uh, an extension. We're up to 13 foot pounds. So we'll just keep doing this. It'll reach uh, peak torque in a moment. 37 pounds is what we need. More. 22, 23. I apologize if you guys can't see the readout. Pretty tight squeeze in here. It'll beep at us when we reach our 37. 29 more nope not yet it's flashing red and green at me something beeped what happened there we go 30 what did that say 31.7 that's not right yeah, 33. There we go, 35, 36 and some change. One more. Oh. 37.7, all right, that's it, got it. Beautiful, okay, now we can move on to the easier ones. Okay, switching out to the longer eight mil. And get the remainder of these guys. Let's get this thing maneuvered in. They're all hand tight as of right now. 17, 19, 20 foot pounds, reset. 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30. 32, 33, 35, 37, right there. That was it, beautiful. This one's kind of obstructed again by that charge air cooler pipe. Reset. Start to get her tight here. Make sure it, that socket stays, or that bit rather, stays on the uh, bolt down there. Here she goes. Ooh, so close, 29. Need to do a reset. Back it up, try again.
31, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37.14 foot pounds. There we go. That one's good. Come here. Clear it out. Yeah, sorry folks, no clicks on this one. We're using the digital units. It's uh, the beeping method. It's uh, almost as accurate and scientific as the clicks, but not quite. 32, 34, 35, 37.3, got it. Okay, that one's in, good. Let's get the passenger side. This one should be a little bit easier. It'll probably be easier to read as well. There. And what we need to do here is clear it out. Get our bit in. I could probably stand to put an extension on this too. 19 foot pounds. Twenty seven foot pounds, thirty, thirty two, thirty three, thirty five, thirty seven, seven. A little too far on that one, but it's okay. Clear it out. We're twenty seven right here. 32, 35, 37, 21, perfect. Clear it out. Six down, two to go. Get a good angle here for my own dangle. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, seventeen. Perfect. One more to go. That's a measly six foot pounds. Eighteen. Thirty-one. We should have it right here at this end, this last one here. 34, 35, 36, 37, 78, got it. Beautiful, okay. All the injectors are now torqued to spec. Okie dokes, now we need to clean up the uh, valve cover components and start to get these pieces fed down into position and then we can tighten down the uh, actual valve covers. Okay, let's blow this out and make it nice and shiny. Get rid of all the debris. We'll give it a shot of the cleaner here. And blow it out with some air, get rid of all the nasty. Air nozzle coming in. I'm gonna go through this groove and just blow all that out of that uh, gasket groove. It's pretty clean, but we'll give it a spray anyway. Great clean pressure washer.
the inside looking. One down, three to go. That's right, it's a two-piece cover system, so there's two bottoms and two tops. All right. Next lower coming in, we'll strip it down and clean it out. Push all these bushings out. Or not. These are the shoulder bushing units to prevent over torquing and excessively clamping forcing the, uh, the cover. More speed. That one's stuck. Okie dokes, let's get some gaskets set up inside of this unit right here. There's one of our new ones. Uh, pretty easy to align these. There's only one section where the hole, uh, well the gasket has a hole just the same as the valve cover. So we'll start with that corner there and just work it around. Shapes and colors, they fit perfectly. Now if you use a good quality gasket, these are uh, Molly gaskets, uh, not El Cheapos. If you use a good quality gasket, it should fit very tightly in the groove around the cover. And if that's clean and free of oil, you can flip them over and they won't come out. See that? That's plenty of adhesion or plenty of friction inside of that groove to hold that gasket into place so it can be installed without issue. I, again, I don't like to put sealant on those because I don't believe in sealant on a seal. 
flat surface, push it down. That was good. Let's get the other half. Same procedure here on the other side. I believe both of these covers are identical parts, which means they can be swapped left and right, so it doesn't matter uh, which gasket goes in which cover because they're, they're both the same. And if they're not, then well, I guess right when I picked up the gasket versus the cover, didn't I? Uh -huh. Let's go ahead and get the shoulder bushings in. Just push them down. They should stay. And these might fall out. They're not exactly super tight, but this is the top side, so it should be fine. As long as I don't flip them upside down, we're okay. Three more to go in the bag. The bag. It's in a bag if you're up north. Bag. Bag in a buggy. There we go. That one's all set up. Next. Rear side coming in. Drop those guys in. Fitting quite nicely. Next, that one, my short one. Why is that bag short? One of these little bushings here. I just opened it. What's this problem here? I'm missing one. Huh, how about that? Came up short. That's weird. Did it fall out somewhere when I opened the bag? No. Okay, well, I, I guess I need to reuse uh, one of the old ones. It looked pretty good. I'll live with it. It's not ideal, but hey, it'll be fine. Okay, switching out time. Let's get some blocks of wood in here because we need to hammer out the injector line seals to the tops of these valve covers. Uh, these are similar to a uh, the spark plug tube seals on a gasser. These are just for the fuel lines. So, what I'll do is make sure I'm not gonna break something by hammering against this, which I think we're good. Put a socket on there, and just tap it through. It'll come out. Ooh, that was too close. There's our injector line seal. Repeat times uh, three. That's a, kind of a weird angle here. Shim that a little better. Try that. Is that gonna work? Oh, that was close. Sacrificial flanges. I'm not gonna do so well if I continue this. I'm playing with fire here. Let's try this. I'll hit it harder. There we go. Knock that one out. Knock the dust off it. Judo smash. Nope. Another. Got it. Those guys are knocked out. Now, we can polish off the ziz wheel, the rest of the sealant around here. This cover does get a full perimeter seal with the RTV sealant. There is not a, uh, a rubber gasket that goes in here. So we are back to the ziz wheel yet again. Going back in.
So here I guess I'll have to just go in with a little pocket screwdriver and just kind of manually extract all of that embedded sealant that's down inside of that groove right there. It's gonna take a while, but it must be done. That's just the way it is. The straight part was easy. These curved parts are the, that's the fun part here. But I'll just keep digging at it. Here, let's try a little uh, nylon wheel on a Dremel tool. Maybe that'll get in that groove. Yeah, kind of. More speed. It's working. Getting into the original layer of sealant that never was scraped out of here. So I'm definitely gonna try to get as much of this out as I can. Uh, that wheel will not survive too long trying to pull all this out. So I'm gonna have to scrape it hard, break it up and get it to break free from inside that groove and then finish it off with the little wire wheel. I think that's my only wheel that I have in that size. So I've got to make it last for both, uh, both of these covers here dig this out as much as I can. We'll pluck it out with the Dremel. There. A straight line, that's an easy part. Okay, so I've got these mostly cleaned up and prepped to go back together on the lower covers. Uh, I'm still, and I didn't realize it, but when I ordered everything, I did not end up getting these seals. So I'm gonna be at a standstill on putting these top covers on until the seals arrive, which should be tomorrow. That's not gonna stop us too much from continuing reassembly. I've got a little bit more cleanup to do inside of this groove on this side, knock these seals out and clean this one off. So I've got three out of the four almost complete with the exception of those seals there. So let's get on back over here to the truck. We will take our lower covers with us and get, uh, get this side over here nice and set up and ready to rock and roll. Set that down right there. So here, let's go fetch one of the returns. It was actually dormant for the win on these return lines right here. They're metal lines. I, I probably could have got away with keeping the old ones, but we're kind of doing a 20-something uh, year rebuild on this thing, so I don't want to leave anything to chance. We even have uh, replacement banjo fasteners. If you recall, when we took this apart, the uh, banjo bolts for those lines were stripping out because they are, uh, they're not a bolt, it's a, it's a hex or an Allen on the inside of the head of the fastener. Epic fail. And again, another win from Dorman. Thanks guys for making these. I appreciate it because GM has discontinued all this stuff. Okay, so what we need to do is I'm gonna go in and pull these plugs out of the return fitting. The plastic guys right here, we can remove those now that we're ready to get the, uh, the return line on. I'll just reach in with some needle noses and pluck them out. There we go, got that one. Another one over here, pluck you out. Come here. And these would probably fit down those drain holes for the for the oil in the head. So I'm gonna make sure I don't drop these down the side of the hole because that would not be a fortunate situation. There we go. Okay, that's all four of my plugs. Now the, uh, the return line is gonna go in in this position here, but we need to set up the gaskets and all the banjo bolts, which I've got. 
I have four of the banjos here. These are to replace the ones that uh, originally were starting to strip out. So what we need to do is set up the gaskets over, how, how am I doing this here? Doing it wrong. We'll set the gaskets up. It's a single component that serves as two ceiling surfaces. See that right there? So we'll, we'll slide those over, drop the banjos down in, and then once they're all in position, we'll get this thing uh, bolted to the head. Hmm, that one's a little loose. Here's what I'll do. I can just kind of squeeze it some and bend that down. And that should create enough friction on it so it doesn't want to fall out. There we go. As I was saying, we don't want it to fall out. No matter, I recovered it. It hit the ground. I forgot, I've got to keep this upright. Next one coming in, give it a bit of a squeeze so it fits nice and tight like. That one goes there. Run the bolt through it. Squeeze that one. There's like multiple grinders going on next door today. Someone's cutting metal, I can smell it. Now, at the end here, we've got another little double gasket situation. And then the banjo to bolt this thing back to the return port in the cylinder head, okay? So all these guys are set up in position here. Let's go ahead and bring this guy down and made it up with the injectors. Like so. Carefully is how I want to do this. My right hand's got a hold of one of the banjo bolts. I'm gonna start the threads into the fuel injector. We'll move on to the remainder. That one's good. That one's good. And then the return fitting over here at the top of the head. Get that one started. Nice. Okay, coming in with a shorty just to, uh, to finish these threads off. There's a bit of a side load friction on them and I can't turn them by hand anymore, but I also can't apply so much torque where I'm gonna cross thread these with this little short guy. So this is a, sort of a way of proofing that I don't have these cross threaded. And they're looking good. Very nice. Okay, that one's seated. Good. Next. Very good. And we've got a 12 mil right here on the return fitting into the top face of the head right here. Let's tighten that guy down. And these will need to be torque wrenched as well. I think it's 30 inch pounds. Yeah, how about 144 inch pounds? We're gonna go with that. Because it is 12 foot pounds, but none of my wrenches that are in foot pounds go down to foot pounds. Those are all in inch pounds, so we're gonna do that at 144 inch pounds because of mathematical conversions. Kickage. There we go. And it's the same spec for the banjos on the injectors themselves. So let's get this guy set up in here. Clicks. Good. 
cool. Next. Let's get a good reset here. Oh, right on. I almost had it. Like right when I stopped. Okay, that one's got some interference. I'm gonna put an extension on this to get some more clearance. Ha, I rhymed. Interference clearance. Little three inch coming in. That'll space this away from those injectors. Clickage, nice. Let's recheck them all again, just for good measure. Yep. Next one. Good. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, let's head over to the bench, clean up these uh, valve covers and get them prepped for reinstallation. And then we can get this one side at least uh, in position and nearly bolted in. All right, we're looking like we're ready to rock and roll here. Let's go ahead and get our lower cover in. Uh, we do not need sealant on the bottom of it. This full perimeter gasket does not have any gaps in here. So let's go ahead and slide this bottom section of our cover down in position and we'll see how it's gonna, how we're gonna fit. And I've already run into a snag user error okay so right over here at the end of come here right over here see that right there that little gasket the or that gasket pack that's on the end of that banjo line see how i've got that thing pointed in this direction that's interfering with the uh the valve cover as it uh, goes down into position so i need to loosen this up and rotate this thing back around to achieve the necessary clearance you know, little details like that can really get you. Let's go ahead and crack this thing loose here. Unclickage. So what I'll do is just take that, rotate it around. There. Now, I've achieved the, uh, the proper clearance necessary to get this cover in position. Back in with the torque wrench. With the quarter inch one, the little miniature. Leakage. There we go. Okay, trying again. Attempt numero dos. Cover coming in. And that's nice. Yep, seated nice and flush. And the lights are flickering. We're going to lose power today? Yeah, there's a very nasty windstorm coming through Florida today. I saw cars were halfway blown off the road i guess the crosswind caught them by surprise and uh sent a few vehicles into the into the ditches kind of unexpected it was cold last night we had heaters going and then this morning it was in the 80s with a uh, super high speed winds okay i'm gonna go ahead and just get all these bolts set up in position on this lower cover and we'll get them torqued I'm checking all the heads on these bolts to make sure that none of them are stripped and they're all looking pretty good. If I find damaged or stripped ones, I'm going to uh, probably have to pull these off and, and replace them. I don't want to install this cover with stripped out headed bolts because that's going to really be a problem for the next guy if there is a next guy. And I don't like to cause problems, I like to solve them. Anyways. It's a little tedious right here. Let's go ahead and speed this up and run through this as fast as possible. My goal is to at least get uh, get this side sealed up and covered with the other cover. I'm, I'm actually gonna have to take off early today. There's a, the storm's looking kind of nasty. Uh, Lauren wife unit just called me and she expressed some concerns about how society is behaving because uh, they seem to be panicking as if there's a category five hurricane on the way. Uh, we've got tornado warnings and the air is super humid today uh, i'm moderately concerned about such things but my truck is also a a rolling disaster tank vehicle so uh i'll make it home just fine 
Anyway, let's go ahead and get with the program real quick. We're gonna speed this up and uh, see how much progress we can make before it's time to tuck tail and run today. All right, torque wrench time on these valve cover bolts. We're looking for 89 inch pounds of torque. Relatively easy. Yeah, these things were way, way over torqued when, uh, when we pulled this system apart. It's gonna ask for two passes at 89 pounds. So let's get our first pass. We'll move into high speed, go through our second pass. I believe they require two passes to account for flex in the cover and the uh, settling of the gasket. There we go. Beginning high speed clickages now. And last one, one more time up here. Clicks 89 inch pounds. Two passes complete. So now it's time to fetch the injector connectors, the wiring harnesses, get those things bolted to the injectors, to the rocker shaft, pass them through the, uh, the hole right here that is uh, designed to, uh, well, to let the, uh, the harness pass through, and then uh, we can get the top cover sealed up and then bolted on. All right, let's get uh, the injectors pass through wiring harnesses connected and bolted down to our individual injectors. So the bracket's gonna bolt on right here. We've got a seal and then the two wires here and here, or four wires here and here. So what I'll do is we'll start with the, uh, the hold down bolts. That way everybody's nice and secured. Actually, I need to get some sealant behind this so there's not enough flex here to actually apply sealant. So we're now on a timetable. Let's throw in some supplied RTV that came with the Molly gasket set. It's a little bit of a dab right there. May not need it, but I'm gonna put some in there just in case we're not doing this job again. Not interested in repeating. So I'm putting so much effort into making this just the most pristine injector job ever. I hate to undo all of my efforts for a simple leaking error. Will not be okay. 10 millimeter socket. Let's run these guys down and give them some preliminary click actions. Tight. And tight. There we go. Good. Now we switch out. Let's go ahead and get the small tiny socket. I think it's a seven mil. And we can tighten down these injector connectors right here. No power tools here. We're tightening down bolts to an electrical component. That's all done by hand. Because again, you mess this up, you don't know until you try to run the thing. And uh, if it's wrong, you've got to re-diagnose it and then do it all over again. And that's not gonna work for me. Hmm, get on there, Ratchet. Oh, this is my crappy extension. It's probably been beat on with a hammer and all kinds of stuff. Clicks. Twice clicks. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, that's one. Let's get the second one in on the back side and then we can get the top cover in position here. Uh-oh, I wasn't recording, but I have the uh, the second harness in position here. We're bolting it down now. You didn't miss much. It's the same as what I just did right here on this one. But yeah, we're gonna get this guy bolted down. I have some sealant up here on the grommet and we'll get these two fasteners locked in for the bracket. And again, we'll have to tighten down the two or the four nuts on the wire connectors for the injectors. Go. 
thick. And the one on the back, right here, we can't really see it, but it's there. Clicks again. I clicked it again. Okay, seven millimeter. Yeah, that's a seven. We'll get all the fasteners here on the injectors. We'll run those guys down. One more right there. There, maybe now you can see a little better. Pull this hose out of the way. All right, a little bit of torque on those units and we are gonna be ready to rock and roll on the top half of the cover. Oh, I've also received those uh, those fuel line seals, the ones that we knocked out earlier. Uh, those are now here, and I've gone ahead and installed them in the cover. Okay, all those guys are tight. They're already installed on the cover, so we're not going to go show that footage because I didn't record that. Yep, okay, that guy's in, that guy's in, bolted, 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 tight, 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 times two. Perimeter bolts are tight. Top cover is ready to rock and roll. This applied sealant is being applied to our freshly cleaned out groove. That's a tongue twister. Just gonna run a nice thin bead around this, keeping its thickness as uniform as possible. Right there, beautiful. Okay, so we've got some sealant around the perimeter of this upper cover. You can see it's cleaned out, nice and super shiny. The fuel line seals are installed and the top side is as clean as we're gonna get it. So let's get this thing in position, set up, and uh, we can get this unit bolted down as well. And that's going to seal up, for the most part, gonna seal up this entire bank over here. Okay, cover is coming in. I've really only got one good opportunity to get this right. If I smear the sealant, I'll have to take it off and try again. So, gotta make sure we're nearly perfectly aligned before making contact with the lower cover. Good, feels good. Contact made, it's even. Continuing to make contact. All right, that cover is in position. Oh no! Oh, I forgot to take the caps off the injectors. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay, here we go. This is just a transfer of sealant. That's, that's what I've done. I think I got that seated so nicely enough. Can't believe I did that. I was telling myself to not forget to do that. That could have been a future disaster. I'm checking for O-rings as well, making sure they're on the injectors. I put them on, then put the caps back on earlier. Okay, yeah, we're good. We're good here, no worries. Okay, well, since I halfway boogered that up, I, I have less fear. Oh, and now there's some RTV on the camera. Oops. Yeah, let's just reapply what I just wiped off there. Man, I, all that talk about doing this perfectly and I'm doing exactly the opposite of what I was trying to do. It's fine though, I can save it. It's gonna be okay. See, the little details are the things that will get you every time. But there's plenty of sealant here, we're, we're okay. Crisis nearly averted. Okay, contact being made. There we go. Okay, 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 okay. So now I need to hold this in position and get a couple of these fasteners started here. 
just to locate this so it doesn't uh, slide down from its current position. So we got that one there. And we'll get one more up here on the far away left hand corner. We'll use the, the Allen key to turn that and thread her down. There we go. These are going to be torqued to, I believe it's 71 inch pounds of torque. Okay, woo, blood pressure, come on down. That was, uh, that was interesting. Yeah, I need to run through, get the rest of these perimeter bolts in, and then we'll, uh, we'll get it all tight. Uh, we are now returning to super high speed lightning fast motion to complete this uh, repetitive behavior. Okay, last one. There we go, last one. Clicked in. These guys are torqued. 71 inch pounds around the perimeter. We can see that some of the RTV has been squeezed out from the clamp, or clamping force rather. That's what we're looking for. We've got a good seal going here. Now it is time to break out the, uh, the new fuel lines and get those fuel lines installed through these holes and onto the rail and that will complete the sealing of this passenger side. Okay, we've got our injector lines here. There's uh, two pairs, or one pair of each part number. So you've got 2008, 2010, 2009, 2007. So we'll separate half of these right now because 50% of these are for this side. So we'll take those guys and get them back in the box. Now I just need to figure out which individual line goes to which individual ejector uh, on that cylinder bank. So let's get these guys opened up and set up in position. So real quick, you guys have noticed that these fuel lines have been exposed a little bit. I'm gonna extract some fuel from this fuel rail using some uh, high pressure air. We're gonna create a venturi at the, no uh, the opening here of these fuel lines and it's gonna draw out some fuel. And uh, if there's contaminants in there, it's gonna draw that out as well. See that? Nice and clean. It's not blowing in, it's blowing across, creating a negative pressure. Good to go. Okay, so I've grabbed one random fuel line and let's just kind of mock this up and see where it seems to want to fit the best. It's not gonna fit there. Uh, it not gonna fit there. Let's try the next cylinder back. I'm kind of just eyeballing this. And it looks like we've got, not gonna fit there maybe. Perhaps in the back over here. I think that's our winner. Okay, let's try it in the back and see if that one fits in that position. I put some lube on the end of this, that way it can pass through these rubber seals in the valve cover. So what we'll do is we'll do the uh, injector side first. Press this thing down in through that seal and then we're gonna see how, she, uh, how it mates up to the actual line. And I think we are, we're no good on this one. That one's not fitting there. Hmm. Yeah, no, that one doesn't reach. Let's pull her out. Try it again. Does not fit there. Might be this one. Yepper, got a winner right here. So we'll thread that onto the rail right here. And again, we always get the thread started before you start to tighten things down. Get that one started. We're threading down onto the injector itself. Let's make sure the thread's caught. And they are caught, I can't pull it out, good.
There we go, one injector line mocked up. Let's just uh, preliminarily tighten this down some more. I'm not going to torque them all yet. We're just going to get them tight and get everything sealed up. Then I got to take a step back and take a bit of a breather. Realistically, we're probably getting a little long on the end of this video. So we'll see how much of this makes it to the final cut. Okay, that one's in. Let's get this next unit kind of threaded down and we'll go back and apply final torque to all of these once everybody's mocked up and everything's uh, in its correct positions here. There we go, that's one. Yeah, you see how these are all shaped uh, somewhat differently? It's four units per side, so I believe this one is going to be the correct one for our front uh, injector. Let's get it started and set up and see how she threads in. You can't get them wrong because you'll never get the fastener started. You just can't do it. And that one is not catching yet. Push it down a little harder. There we go. I felt it kind of touch the top of that injector. So that guy's on and it does meet up with the fuel rail on this side. So we're looking good here. Yeah. Insert foot in mouth. It's not matching up. Come on, you. Oh, there she goes. Now we're cooking. Okay, that's all threaded and in position here now, both sides. Let's run them down. Get some preliminary torque to complete the seal. That one's good. I'll have to check the, uh, the torque spec on these as well. go yeah. okay those guys are bottomed out let's try the next one okay numero tres I believe that I've got a 50 50 chance of getting this right again there's some lube on the end of that fitting to slide into the rubber and we'll get the thread started on the injector. We can't see it, we can only feel it. Give it a pull and we are not threaded. Didn't make it. Trying again. Ah, oh, there we go. This would start. Let's pull it out and find out. Yep, that one's good. Next fitting, that one's going in. Good. Okay, let's put a little bit of torque on it. Run it down until it stops. Make sure nobody's binding up. That feels about right. Let's check that last one real fast. I know we're getting farther away and it's harder to see. Uh, my apologies. It is what it is. Okay, that one's on. That one feels good too, okay. Are we threading? Yeah, that one thre that one threaded. Good. 
Make sure that one threads in. And I wonder if I've got two of these backwards. Hmm. I believe that I may have these two lines backwards. If you see right here, see how that metal piece is touching the, uh, the fitting? Right, let me get in closer. You see it right there, it's kind of touching. It shouldn't be doing that. It should have even space all the way around it like these other two. I think I've got these backwards. So I'm gonna pull this back apart and try to flip flop those around the other direction. So we'll put this one on the rear cylinder and then move that rear one up to this position. They're very close, but the differences are extremely minute, but important. And so if it doesn't feel like it's going on very well, it's probably not. And you can kind of try to flex it and make it work. And you might even be able to get them to thread on, but they, they may not seal. Let's pull this guy out, flip flop these around. I could be right and they're just really tight fitting, but I don't want to risk it. I need to confirm such things. Let's try this one. And yeah, that doesn't fit at all. So I guess I did have it right the first time. Interesting. Okay. Doing it again. Yeah, in hindsight, I should have, have marked the position on these. I can go back and check the part numbers, but uh, I think this method of problem solving won't fail me. I'll be able to get it on and set up no problem. Maybe I'll get more clearance out of this space right here once these are fully tightened down. That also could be uh, the cause of it. Yeah, it's gonna go together. That one's fine. So yeah, there's there's more than one thing I could have done differently to make this section easier. I assumed it was a, there was enough difference in these where the differences would have been very obvious and my assumption has led me astray slightly. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah look at here. The more I tighten this, the more clearance we're getting now. That's a little better. I'll live with that. Yeah, that gap starting to appear between the the line and uh, and that fitting. This is looking fine by my eyeballs. It also could be subtle differences in the, uh, the dimensions of these because these components were not uh, GM components. These were uh, just an off-brand manufacturer. Not an off-brand, I think they were like standard motor products. But again, it wasn't a Delco or a GM or uh, a Zuzu part number. So I can see how there's a slight bit of room for error in the dimensions because they would have been built on different machines than the originals. For the record, the originals were not available. So I had to go with what, what we could get. There we go, put that guy in. Thread her down. Again. Hmm. Well, folks, when I get these things seated all the way, I think that's gonna put me at a stopping point right now. Uh, like I said, we got this real nasty storm coming through and we need to bring cars inside so they don't get destroyed. Uh, I'm not saying I'm scared of things getting destroyed today, but I'd rather not leave uh, the vehicles outside when we can cover them up. I'm gonna do some minor storm prep for the day and we're probably gonna duck out a little bit early just to go home and kind of clean the yard up so stuff doesn't blow off through the street and whatnot. So we're at a stopping point. All these injector lines are going in uh, fairly smoothly. 
and uh, I've got a whole nother half of engine of an engine to reassemble on the other side. So it looks like we're just gonna close this one out right here on this side. And then we can pick back up tomorrow and reassemble the other side. And that uh, just gonna have to save that for a second uh, second video because we're gonna be doing pretty much the same thing, but uh, in the mirror image version. So guys, that being said, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did enjoy this video or have any questions about uh, this particular operations, uh, feel free, blah, 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 tongue twister. Please feel free to let me know about that stuff in the comment section down below. Uh, do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later. In a video, end of uh, Silver Rado Duramax injector installation slash uh, reassembly. See you guys in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.